Hello everyone, Hadi Family Grits here again, and today we are going to continue from where we left off in our last episode, which seems to be while it grew, I think, till which it grew to be precise. And contrary to my advocate of being consistent in what we do, I think we can all agree that maybe I'm not a bit consistent. And the lesson I'm trying to bring out from this is sometimes you make plans, but things doesn't go the way you want. However, what you should do instead is when you have the avenue to come back, you should try to maintain it and actually come back and be consistent. So I'm hoping that I'm back now and I will ensure to be consistent in the whole process going forward. But again, the life is still there and it can stay open. So that's by the way. So let's get back into the plan. And as you can see on the screen, this was where we left off in the last episode by trying to validate our account number. However, one of the issues we had from the last episode is that if we try to use a run account number, we get this error. So this is going to be one of the things we are going to fix, but we'll get to that later on. Another thing I want us to also work on is the fact that at the moment we are trying to send money, but we have not specified the account we are trying to send money to in the first place. So that's first thing we need to do. So on the input field, as we can see, the first thing we are supposed to do is to select the account from which we want to send the money. So let's work on that first. So coming back into our code base, here is the use send money hook. So we should go back into the account component first. And here we can get the list of accounts which we are expected to send into the use send money. So this gets the account, then we have the you send money here. So just like we did with the get add money, where we send the accounts, we also did the same thing for the get send money. So just like we have the accounts and the complete operation, we will need the same thing here. So let's get some new friends from the get add money. So let's take a look at the book. So here we have it. So get add money and we have the accounts here. So we can copy this. Let's do the same thing. Copy this. Looks like there's an issue here. So account type. I think we changed the location of account type. So let's update that. All right. So that's updated. So now that we've copied this structure, let's come back to the use send money, which is this. And this is going to be within the get send money. So we're going to send this here. And we need to import the account type. So also we're going to need the uncomplete at the end of the day. So as to kind of reset everything once we are done. So we're going to make use of this just like we've used it within the use add money. So we are literally doing some repetitions here. So let's copy the label select from this. So we have some function, or rather we have a function here, get account select. So we're also going to need this function for the you send money. So as a result of that, it makes sense to just make this function um, a util so that we can reuse it anywhere we want. So I'll cut this out and I'll take it down to my L pass. Then I can export the function here. Else or paste. So now we have to import this. All right, so that's looking good. So now we can come back to the use add money and update the function. So we update with this. And now I'll just copy this all. I'll save this, come back to the use send money. And we want to do this before even considering the account number. So if we did not select an account, the account number should not show up. Okay. So let's get the label select here and let's get this function. Okay. So next we can come down here. We have the account number. We have the amount. We can as well have the account itself. But I think the account should be a different um, state because it's a completely different um, information. We are not going to be sending the account as a whole to the backend. So I can manage this with a different state. So cost. 
account, then set account across to use state into account type. So it can be null and it can be account type. So coming back into the selection here, so we have the this, it's a required field. Then we can have the on select. So I think it's on change or on value change actually. So just to be sure of the value here, we can have the value and console log it. Okay. So we can come back to our browser. Is there an issue? Yep, there seems to be an issue because we defined some parameters which we've not sent. So this is expected as you can see. So we have to come back here and provide those parameters. So we have the accounts and our complete operation. So we are still using the same thing at the end because most likely they are going to be doing the same thing. Try to refresh the account. We can use the same function. So let's come back to our browser. Yeah, we are back here. And now we have the from accounts. Okay, so we send out the accounts, the USD or NG or something like that. And another thing I think I want to have here is the amount within the account. So that way you can have an idea of the amount you have so as to not send uh, any random stuff. And also, we need you to select the account first before the account number comes up. So let's do that. So you send money. This would only come up when we have the account. Or better still, before we even get there, there was something we were trying to check on our console. So let's see what Jeff sent. So if we make a change, yep. So this is what we get, NGN and USD. So these are the keys. So we are going to use that information to update our account itself. So coming back to our code in here. So let's, so let's have a special on change for this. So let's call this cost on account select so it's going to take the accounts which is of type account type just like this then it's going to take the key the key we've selected which is going to be of type string then we're going to find that key from that account then set our account so copilot already gave us the idea so caused account across to accounts dot find this so we are trying to find the currency However, this can be null, which is the situation. Yeah, undefined. So what we will do here is we will say if account, then set account. So that makes it uh, better. So now we can come back here and get the value here. Then call the on account select. So we send the accounts and the value here. So that makes more sense. Then now we want to ensure that we only show the account number only when the account has been selected. So we can come here, we can have account and add this. So just like we added some spacing from the top for the Amounts, we also want to do that for this. So we can copy this, or better still, we can just remove this entirely and give our form a spacing. So we can have last name space dash one dash five. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. So by default, we have this. So actually, let's refresh the old thing. So send money by default, we have select an account. We have to, so we can select the NGN or the USD. However, I mentioned that I also want the 
the amount left in each account to be shown. So we are going to work on that um, soon. But well, once we select the account, now we can also verify the account. And this also adds some layer to our validation. So now we know the account we are dealing with. So once we enter the account number, it's going to return the validated uh, information. There also we can perform the account we are trying to send money into. So we can perform our validation in such manner. That's about that. But first thing first, I want to fix this. So I will come back to the quote. So the get account select, I want to send an extra parameter telling it to add the money info to it. So I will say true. And if I come back here, I can have an extra parameter called money info. And by default, this is false. Okay. So for what we have at the moment, we have it returning the currency as both the key and the value. However, anytime we include the money for, we want to add the amount as an extra for to it. So I'm going to change this to a string format. So we have control X. So we have the string format. So, yep, it's giving us the idea already. So if money info exists, then we want to format currency, then the balance. Else, we just want to return an energy strength. So this has to be converted to a string. Yep. So that's about that. So for our senet, because we are using the chat UI, chat scene senet, for it to work, this key and value has to be the same thing. And since we'll be doing the same thing again for the value, we can as well just have a temporary variable to represent this. So we can have the key or let's probably just post thing. Then I can have this here. actually not outside the loop it has to be inside the loop so since we are going to be working inside the loop we can move this out turn this into a brace then define so return this then return this here however now we can have our temporary variable which is going to be equals to this whole thing So this is now going to be the key and value. See. So well this is going to work in terms of the UI. However, the selection is going to be different because what we are checking for is now different. So we have to make an adjustment for that. So we have two ways of handling this. You see that we try to replicate the structure such that it matches with what we are trying to check here, or we kind of split it. So what we would do instead is have a function to kind of get this whole structure. So I would call this export function. Yep. So maybe not format currency we didn't sign. I'll call this get account or rather get account format like that. So this is expecting the currency as well as the balance. So here we can have the currency, which is going to be of type string and the balance, which is going to be of type number. And better still, you can make this a whole account, but let's make it special. Let's make it specific to what it's doing. So it's expected to return a string. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. And I'm going to return this. So this should be the currency. And in this case, we are not checking for money info. We are just expected to pass this. So I'll copy this out. 
and move this O and paste this. So this should be the balance. All right, cool. Okay, let's have it like this. So if money info, we format the account format, we use this function, we get this, else we just use the currency. So that makes more sense. Now, because we are expecting the structure here, we can convert it. So these are the accounts and key is going to be of this structure. So we want to convert the account currency into that key. So here we can have format, account format into the currency, which is this, comma, the balance, account dot balance. Okay, that's formatted and looking nice. So with that, we should have things back the way we want. Let's refresh, send money, select accounts. So now we have this information. So we can see the structure of the, or rather, we can see the amounts within the accounts. So yeah, we have this. Now we can go back to our initial flow, which is selecting our account. So let's copy this one, send money. We have this, we have paste, and we have all this. Now we can enter the amount and send money. So let's do something. Let's come here and inspect the page. If we come down to the network, let's perform the validation again. So if we come here and take a look at the data we got back, we will see that we have information about the currency of that account, and we have information about the US, the user ID. So what are we going to do with this information? So we can perform two operations. We can confirm that the account we are sending money from and to, I don't know why this is working, but yeah, we're going to fix that if there's an issue. So we can validate the account we are trying to send money for is the same currency as the account we are sending money to. Then also with the user ID and the authenticated logging user, we can also validate that we are not trying to send money to ourselves. So we might not be able to cover everything in this episode, but we get the idea we are going to get there very soon. So we've done this, making preparation to send money. However, I would like us to go to the back end and actually ensure that everything is perfect on that end for us to send the money. So coming back to the back end, let me close this. So here is the account.go file, which is representing our account content, our account information. So here is the transfer function. This is meant to undo our transfer process. And we've created this function far back. And from the structure, what it's expecting is the from account ID, which we can get, and the to account ID, which we don't have the information at the moment. Instead, what we have is the account number. So we're going to change this to the account number. So to account number, and this will become to account number. So an account number is of type string. So we're going to convert this to a string. And yeah, let's update other things. So this is the account itself. We make some validations to ensure that the account we are trying to send money from actually is okay. So it exists and that's all. So here we try to get the accounts we are sending money to. And because we've changed things now, this is going to change from get account by ID to get by account number. And also this is going to be using the no string brother. So we've done this before. So SQL no string, we can copy this whole thing. Come back up. So there we have it. We're going to replace this. So here, this is going to be TR to account number. So this is now valid. Okay. So we've validated that. And the last thing we have to do is to update this as well. So we are still going to return the same thing. However, 
we are not getting the tow account ID from there again. Instead, we are going to get it from the tow account. So we are going to change this from this to tow account dot user ID. Or rather, I do not use ID. So that's the first part. However, this has to be in in 32. So let's convert this. Yep, that's better. So it looks like our transfer function has been updated correctly. We're going to test that in the next episode. However, one thing we are going to update now is the validation for when an account was not found. So let's do that here. So here it is. So I'm going to replace this with the new um, check. So this checks for trying to get the account. So if SQL does not, if, the, if there is no rule, then we just say could not get account, which makes no sense. So let's say that the server is running. Yep, looks like it refreshed successfully. And now let's go back to our browser. Let's refresh this. Okay, our session is expired. Let's log it again. Right. So send money, select accounts. Then let's use this. Yep. So let's try to get an account that doesn't exist. So yeah, couldn't get accounts. So that's much more like it. So we have our structure laid out to be able to send money. And in the next episode, we are going to actually implement that. And with that, we'll reach a milestone in our process, being able to send money as well as add money. So there you have it, guys. This is where I'm going to stop it in the episode. Try to stay tuned. If you've not subscribed, ensure you are subscribed so as to enjoy, well, my future consistencies. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next episode.